Today I'm going to work out a couple of uh, factoring examples that show you how to deal with negative exponents if you would happen to have some negative exponents. Um, I do have a little hint set up here for you. Um, if you just keep in mind, whenever you take out the greatest common factor, we really do take out the smallest um, exponent on our variables. All right, But just to reemphasize that, um, if you've definitely got some negative exponents floating around in there, then you just have to make sure you're thinking that, okay, I've got to factor out the variable with the smallest exponent, in which case it's probably going to be those negative exponents. All right, so in this first example, I've got x plus 10 um, plus a 7x to the negative 3. Okay, now um, let's fill in some extra things here. The problem may look like this in the book. As you recall, a plain variable has a 1 exponent right there, and then a plain number if I need to see it, it would be an x to the 0 power right there. So you can go ahead and put that in there so that you can clearly see all of your exponents there and which one's going to be the smallest. All right, I'm looking at a 1 and a 0 and a negative 3. All right, so I know I'm going to take out an x raised to the negative 3 because that's my smallest exponent. I'll take a look at those coefficients, a 1 and a 10 and a 7, and I do not have a greatest common factor in the coefficients. So the only thing that's going to be factored out is an x to the negative 3. All right, now, um, here... And if you think, okay, well, I've got to distribute this back out to get the answer that I'm doing. That's what I'm doing, y'all. If you factor something, then you can take that answer and multiply it back to get that original answer. So I've got to come up with, this will be x raised to some power, all right? So when multiplying like bases, we add the exponents. So I've got to come up with a number that goes right here. Negative 3 plus what number will give me a 1 right there. It's going to be a 4, because then when I would FOIL this back out, I would go back and get that x to the first power. All right, um, for the middle term there, the 10 will stay, and then I've got to ask myself, okay, so x raised to what power here? Negative 3 plus what number is going to give me a 0? Well, a negative 3 plus a positive 3 is going to give me a 0, so this has to be a, an x to the third. All right, here the 7 comes down. And again, all right, I'm going to have an x. So negative 3 plus what number is going to give me a negative 3? Well, negative 3 plus 0 would give me a negative 3. All right, however, we know that x to the 0 is 1. So really, I don't need that in there at all. So the final factored um, answer here would be x to the negative 3 times the quantity x to the 4th plus 10x to the 3rd plus a 7. All right, and then here on the second example, um, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take a look at all those variables, and I'm going to find the smallest one. And again, here, any plain x there will have an exponent of 1. So if you want to put that in there so you can compare all your exponents, 4, 1, and negative 5. Negative 5 is going to be um, my smallest exponent, so I will take out an x to the negative fifth. I also need to take a look at those coefficients. I have a 3 and a 9 and a, a 12 right there, negative 12. Greatest uh, common factor I can take out there is going to be a 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3x to the negative 5. All right. Um, 3 divided by 3 is going to give me the 1 coefficient. All right. So then I just have to be concerned with what exponent goes right here. Negative 5 plus what number is going to give me a 4. Well, a negative 5 plus a 9 will give you the 4 right there. All right. In this middle term, I've got a 9. I factored out the 3. That will leave me with a 3. And then I have to figure out, okay, what exponent do I need on my x? Negative 5 plus what number will give me a 1? If I fill that in with a 6, negative 5 plus 6 gives me a positive 1 right there. All right, and then on this last term, I've got the 12. I take out the uh, 3. That's going to leave me with a 4. All right, and then I could do this the same way I did over here. Or you can just look at this and go, okay, x to the negative 5th. I'm taking out x to the negative 5th. I won't have any variables left there at all. So you don't have to actually put in that x to 0 and then cross it out in the next line. All right, so then there we have that. Okay, so two examples of factoring out negative exponents.